afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the virtual open house for BC3 at Linden Point. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you'll know how to participate in today's event. You're listening through your computer speakers by default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, access the control panel in the upper right corner of your screen and select telephone in the audio pane. The dial-in information is displayed there. We are excited to announce that you can apply to BC3 for free today at bc3.edu slash apply, or you can apply at any time during our free application days from May 8th through May 17th. Our agenda for today's virtual open house is as follows. We will give you some information about BC3 from admissions, talk about financing your education, and get a nice overview about our BC3 at Linden Point location. We will then walk you through your next steps in the enrollment process at BC3. We will end with a question and answer period with today's panelists. We have provided some materials for today's virtual open house that are currently available under the handout portion of the control panel. There's a copy of today's presentation, Job Corps information, and our BC3 view book. You will also have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's panelists by typing your questions into the question pane of the attending control panel. You may type and send your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Before we hear from our first presenter, we would like to ask our audience a question. Our first poll is, what is your educational goal? The options are, take a course or earn a degree at BC3 and immediately start a career, take courses and earn a degree at BC3 and transfer to a four-year college or university, Earn BC3 credits while enrolled at another college or university. Earn college credits while still in high school or uncertain. Please select the appropriate response, then click Submit. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, we will close the poll. We are now closing the poll. And let me share the results. What well, looks like several of you, or 55% of you, plan to take classes at BC3, earn a degree, and transfer to a four year uh, college or university. And then there's also some that plan to start a career, about 27% of you. And then others of you, 9% plan to earn some BC3 credit while enrolled at another college or university. And there's 9% nine of, nine of you that are uncertain. So it's perfect to be here for our virtual open house at Linden Point. We'll be able to answer questions about all of those sections. I would like to now introduce our first presenter, Ms. Suzanne Wazalewski. Good afternoon, everyone, and I also want to welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're glad you've chosen to spend your afternoon with us here at BC3, and we hope that the information we present to you this afternoon will be helpful in completing your next steps in your educational journey. What I want to start off with today is sharing a statistic with you, and you can see on your screen this statistic. Nearly 6 million Americans are enrolled at community colleges across the nation. In total, that's about 34% or more than a third of the entire undergraduate population enrolled at colleges and institutions today. That number, that percentage is really a testament to the large role that community colleges play in educating individuals today. So you're making a really wise choice by looking at a school like BC3. 
One of the other things I want to point out to you on this very first slide is a graphic in the lower right hand corner. BC3 has been named five times running the number one community college in Pennsylvania and that's something we're very proud of. I want to start off by giving you some brief information about BC3, the college as a whole. Annually, we typically have about 3,000 credit-bearing students enrolled across the college, but these students are not all at one location. In fact, BC3 has six different locations. Two locations are in Butler County, our main campus in Butler, as well as BC3 at Cranberry, located in Cranberry Township. We have BC3 at Brockway, which is located in Jefferson County, primarily serves Clarion, Jefferson, Elk, and Clearfield counties. BC3 at Armstrong is located in Ford City. BC3 at Lawrence Crossing is located in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, Lawrence County. And then of course, BC3 at Linden Point, located in Hermitage, Pennsylvania, in Mercer County. So there are lots of options to get your education close to home. Uh, many of our students also take online classes, either exclusively or maybe they take some face-to-face -face courses and some online classes. So there's lots of room to take courses in the location, the time, and the format that works best for you. We do offer 55 unique associate degree programs, which we'll talk more about during our time together today, as well as 21 certificate programs. And the beauty of the certificate programs is they can take a year or so to complete and then get you right out into a career. So it's a nice turnaround time there for you to get trained into the career you want to go into. We're going to talk about transfer and I saw that more than half of you had indicated in our first poll today that you intend to take classes or earn a full degree at BC3 and then transfer on to a senior institution. So we'll make sure that we focus on some transfer information today as well. We're also going to talk with you, um, as you saw from today's agenda, about the financial aid side of college and how to make that work. 75% of BC3 students receive financial aid to help them graduate debt free. The wonderful thing about that is whether a student is planning to transfer after their time at BC3 or go directly out into the workforce, a lot of them are walking out our doors without student loan debt. So that's not going to hold them back going forward from BC3, no matter what the end goal is for them. And one of the last things I want to mention is our student to faculty ratio. We have about a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And what that means is that you will get that one-on-one -on -one time in the classroom with your faculty members, with your peers, to really get that quality education and get your questions answered. So we mentioned that BC3 has 55 unique associate degree programs and 21 certificates. All of those different programs offered at BC3 fall under one of four categories, one of four divisions at the college. So briefly, I just want to go through those. Uh, we have first and foremost our business division. That division would contain degrees like accounting, business administration, business management, computer information systems, etc. We have our Division of Humanities and Social Sciences. This is the largest group of programs at the college. This would be everything from education to psychology to emergency services and criminology. Um, we even have a general studies program that students who may be undecided can start and even graduate with a general studies degree. We have our STEM division. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. So those would be degrees like Biological Science, Engineering Technology, Chemistry, Mathematics. And lastly, we have our Schaefer School of Nursing and Allied Health. So those would be where our healthcare programs fall, uh, nursing, physical therapist, assistant, medical coding and billing, etc. One thing I will note is BC3 is known for its very strong nursing program. Um, for those of you who may have an interest in our nursing program, please note that our nursing application will open on August 1st of 2020 and will be open through October 30th. That would be if you're intending to apply to hopefully start your clinical in the fall 2021 semester. So we do work about a year ahead of time on that program. So for those of you who are going to be attending in the fall, or maybe even sooner if you're looking for a summer June start, we do have two different honor societies. One of these is Kappa Beta Delta, and this is our honor society specifically for business majors. 
The other honor society at BC3 is called Phi Theta Kappa, and this is the largest international honor society for the two-year college in the nation. So that is, or internationally, that is something that if you meet certain GPA requirements at BC3, you will get an invitation to be a part of, and this helps with networking opportunities. It looks wonderful on your resume, and it's these these. Um, honor societies are really a wonderful experience for students, so please keep that in mind as you get started with us, as you earn your grades and, and hopefully do really well, that these are options for you to get involved. We may also have some individuals on our webinar today who are still going to be in high school next year. So if you are entering your sophomore, junior, or senior year in high school coming up in the 2020-2021 academic year, we have an opportunity for you to get a jump start on your college experience. This is called our College Now program. And this program, like I said, allows high school sophomores, juniors, and seniors who meet certain GPA requirements to take college courses while they're still enrolled in high school. You can take classes at any BC3 location or online, so often it varies by high school whether or not you would come during the school day, take an evening course, or maybe if you can't get out during the school day, you can take an online course as well. Um, this is a great option whether a student wants to attend BC3 upon graduation from high school, or even if they want to graduate and go elsewhere. These are credits that they can transfer with them when the time comes. And again, about 55% of you indicated that your goal was to start at BC3 and then transfer. So we really want to focus on that transfer piece today. We have 12 program to program transfer agreements. And how these work, we'll list them here shortly, but how these work is if a student completes any one of these 12 degrees, they can then walk into any of the 14 Pennsylvania state system of higher education institutions with junior standing. Now, those Pennsylvania state system of higher education schools would be the state system schools like Slippery Rock, Clarion, IUP, Cal U, and Edinburgh, just to name a few that you may be familiar with. So the beauty of that is you do freshman and sophomore year essentially with us. You walk onto those campuses with junior standing. We do also have other unique articulation agreements though. Um, some of the ones I want to mention are nursing specifically. So we do have nursing program RN to BSN articulations with Chatham University, Carlo University, Lock Haven University, as well as Slippery Rock University and Waynesburg University. So again, if you're thinking that nursing, that healthcare route, keep that in mind too. That being said, your only options for transfer are not state system schools or even in the state of Pennsylvania. You may be looking to go out of state. That is okay as well. Our credits are recognized by several public, private, state-related, and online colleges and universities. If you do have a transfer destination in mind, we do encourage you to speak to those transfer destination schools often and early so that you know from freshman year at BC3 on that you are taking exactly what you need to go with you when the time comes. And we do work, our transfer counselors really work to have those transfer opportunities visible and available to students on campus. Um, they have transfer visit days. Um, transfer counselors are on campus to meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. They set up tables in the different areas on campus. So we really work to make sure that that information is available. And I mentioned those 12 program to program partnerships with the state system schools. Those degrees are listed here for you as well. So I encourage you to take a look at these, read down through them. They are biological science, business administration, chemistry, communications, computer science, criminology, early childhood education, grades pre-K through four, English, history, mathematics, psychology, and social work. I know later on today um, we're going to hear from an individual from our Linden Point location to talk more about which of these programs can also be completed fully at that location, but if any of these programs are of interest to you, uh, make sure that you take note of that statewide transfer agreement. When you arrive on campus at BC3, one of the things we hear from students all the time is what a supportive environment it is for them and how when the time to transfer or graduate comes, sometimes they're a bit sad to leave us. Um, we do have a very, very supportive staff here at BC3 and these student support services that we're gonna talk about do help with that as well. 
you will have an assigned academic advisor, a personalized academic advisor, no matter which location you attend, who will sit with you, talk through any concerns you may have, and make sure that you're scheduling the right courses to make progress toward earning your degree. We do have free tutoring available for our students too, so for every course you take, you're eligible for an hour of free tutoring per week. Let's say, for instance, in the fall, you're taking English and math. And if you're a student like me, math may not be your strong subject. So I would sign up to sit with a math tutor an hour each week throughout the semester to ensure that I'm successful in that course. Now, tutoring is completely voluntary. It is not a mandatory program, but we do encourage students to be very proactive with tutoring so that you don't fall behind. It's always easier to stay ahead rather than to fall behind and try to catch up later on in the semester after midterms. We do also have a really good career services program. They can help you with things like resume writing, mock interviewing, um, those pieces that when it's time to go out to the workforce, time to go out for interviews, for practicum, things like that, you are ready to make a good impression on potential employers. And I mentioned, again, some of our transfer services, coordinating transfer day, having those transfer counselors on campus. There's individuals on campus who work to coordinate all of that for students. If you're a high school student who has any sort of disability, a high school IEP, um, anything along those lines, we do also have an access and disability coordinator on campus. Um, so Jen Lowey is her name um, and she supports all of our students so we can make sure to get you connected with her as well. Whether it's things like larger print, um, extra time on testing, someone to read your exams to you, whatever it may be, we can work to make sure you have the necessary accommodations in place to be successful. And lastly, I want to mention our KEYS program. KEYS stands for Keystone Education Yields Success. Um, and this program is specifically for students who receive TANF cash assistance or SNAP benefits. So if that's something familiar to you, we could always get you in touch with that office when it comes time to attend BC3 because they have some great resources for students. In addition to the student support services available, there's also the side of this too, where you might be thinking, what will my college experience look like? What will my activities look like? I wanna mention our intercollegiate athletic program. We do have six intercollegiate athletic teams on campus. Um, so if you are a student athlete and you wanna continue on at the collegiate level, you can do that at BC3. We do have men's baseball and men's basketball available, as well as women's basketball, softball, and volleyball. We do have a men and women's golf team as well. So there's opportunities there. If you're an athlete in any one of those sports and want to continue on, we can certainly do that. So again, I work for our admissions office, and we have a wonderful staff that's always willing to help you with any sort of questions you may have. That's our role in admissions. So there's myself, Suzanne Wazalewski, as well as our associate director, Morgan Rosardi. Um, Jerry Johnson is another admissions representative in our office. And for the College Now program that we mentioned for high school sophomore, juniors, and seniors, your primary point of contact would be Erin Chaffee, our assistant director of high school programming. Um, there are links here to each of our calendars if you wanted to make an appointment with any of us to discuss anything further. We do also have a general admissions email inbox and phone that we are monitoring constantly. So again, if you have any general admissions questions or want to get in touch with us, please don't hesitate. We will make sure we get back with you. Thank you so much, Susie. It sounds like there's some great educational transfer partnerships and opportunities available for our BC3 students at Linden Point. Remember, if you have any questions for Susie, you may type in and send your questions at any time during the presentation by typing them into the question pane on the attendee control panel. Before I introduce our next presenter, we have another question for our audience. Our second question is, have you completed your FAFSA? And the options are yes, no, or what is the FAFSA? Please select the appropriate response and click Submit. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, we will close the poll.
We are now closing the poll. And let me share the results with everyone. Well, look at that. We have a 50% that have submitted their FAFSA and 50% who have not yet submitted their FAFSA. Great job for the yeses and the noes. No worries, there's still time for you to be able to submit your FAFSA. And I'm glad to see that everybody knows what FAFSA means. I would like to now introduce our next presenter. Mrs. Julie Ludet, our Director of Financial Aid. Take it away, Julie. Hello, and welcome to the financial aid portion of the virtual open house. As Amy said, I'm your Director of Financial Aid, and we serve all the campus locations through um, our department on main campus. I always like to start out talking about what is financial aid. And, and to share, as you can see from the slide, there are a lot of different resources for students in helping fund their educational expenses. So we participate in federal and state grant programs. Those are free money that you don't have to pay back, but there is criteria that you have to qualify for through the FAFSA application that we'll talk about on the next slide. We also welcome outside scholarship programs. So hopefully you're working with your high schools, organizations, doing web searches, but we also note here that we have a very large scholarship program for our BC3 Education Foundation. So we're quite proud of that. We award over $200,000 to our students annually every year. The application is available now, so you can go out on the websites. Again, we encourage students to apply, not only new students coming in, but our current and returning students as well. We do participate in the student loan program. So as it was mentioned, we are proud to acknowledge that we do graduate a lot of students debt free because of our affordability. But we also have many students that do borrow from the loan program as well. And it is a nice program in place to help students with their expenses. Maybe they don't qualify for the free money, but still need assistance um, through their educational costs. The nice thing about the student loan program is you don't have to pay it back until after you graduate or stop attending at least part time. So as you're going through college and maybe even transferring on to a four year, those loans will not go into repayment until you're done with school and then you'll have several repayment options. So it's not a burden as you're getting through your education. We also welcome employment opportunities for students. We have that option as well through um, not only the federal work study program, but we have a career center on main campus that works with students. So campuses on, I mean, jobs on the campus and also within the community that we can assist with. We are a veteran friendly college. So we have many veteran benefits for our veterans, not only the veterans themselves, but we also serve dependents of veteran spouses that may qualify for vet, um, benefits as well. And that information comes through our office, so you would work with us if you're a veteran or a spouse dependent on a veteran. Then we work with outside um, third party agencies that you may be working with as well to help fund your educational expenses. They still like you to complete the FAFSA and stay in touch with our office. We know Pittsburgh Job Corps, that's a nice program where if you qualify based on their criteria, they'll help not only with tuition expenses, but other costs that you have while going to school, such as books, transportation. And you'll see through the handouts that we included, there is one on Pittsburgh Job Corps. Also with our website at the bottom there, that will go, if you go directly to our website, it will give you a lot more detail about the programs that I just spoke about and what is required to go through those processes. So how do I apply? So it was nice to see on the poll question that 50% of you are past that already, but we'll still talk a little bit more about um, as you proceed um, with having the FAFSA complete in the annual process. And as Amy mentioned, it's okay if you haven't done it yet. It's not too late. You can still file the FAFSA. And the sooner you get it done, it's always, you know, the quicker you know where you stand with financial aid, but again, you have some time and you know we can assist you with that in the next month, so I'll talk about that. The first step that we always share with students is to register for an FSA ID, the username and password, and I have the website noted there. That's how you sign the form electronically. Everything's done online. And then if you're a dependent student using parents' information on the FAFSA, at least one parent would have to have a username and password as well. After you have that and you can do both these steps in one day, you then can go to the FAFSA application at studentaid.gov. You usually want to allow about 40 minutes of your time 
And you'd want to have 2018 tax information for the fall 20 FAFSA application. So you'll see when you get on the website, there's always two FAFSA applications usually in effect because um, we currently still have students completing the one for this year as we continue with fall, spring, and summer and have summer courses. So if you're interested in coming for the summer as well, you'd actually want to do both FAFSA applications. So there's a 1921 that was for the fall, spring, and this current summer. And then the 2021 is the one starting in the fall. So that will be for fall, spring, and summer of 2021. And, and I know to make sure you do it annually, because as you'll see when you complete the FAFSA, you are using income information, reporting household size. So things like that can change from year to year. Once you do it the initial year, it does become easier. You don't quite need 40 minutes of your time because it will bring your information over and you'll just need to update things that do change. As I said, the income information, maybe number in college, but your high school information, address, that information may still stay the same and it's already on there. I also note, be careful, don't use FAFSA.com. So again, we have the website there and you can link to that on our website as well. Sometimes there are websites out there that if you Google FAFSA, that may come up and it's the same information, but they will charge you for that. Keep in mind, FAFSA stands for Free Application Federal Student Aid. So there's no charge. And that again is what my office is there to do is to help you get through that process. Our college code is noted there. You have to make sure you put that on there. That's how I have access to see your financial aid information and start to process it in our office. So if, if you don't take note of it, um, you can pull us up by the college name as well when you're completing the FAFSA. So what are your next steps? Um, so as we said, once you um, complete the FAFSA and apply to the college, so for those of you that have already completed the FAFSA and you're going to go through the application process, I am then able to match your records up and bring your FAFSA data into our system. I do that weekly, sometimes more than just once a week um, to keep up to date, to have quick turnaround, to communicate back to our students any information that we may still need from them or to show them the financial aid they're eligible for. We use the BC3 student email to communicate. That's very important to understand that. When you get your acceptance letter from BC3, you'll have a BC3 email to activate. Make sure you do that and look at that, because again, that is the majority of our correspondence. Not only the financial aid department, you'll find that's how pretty much all our departments communicate to students. We try not to send too much paper out. We do do some paper, but the majority is through our email and our student portal and such as things that you'll learn about as you're a BC3 student. Our information will come from the financial aid at bc3.edu email, and sometimes it comes from our personal staff as you're working individually with them. But again, um, look for, after you file that FAFSA and apply to the college, I usually tell students to give around two to three week turnaround for us to bring your information in and start processing your application. And sometimes we need to follow up with documentation. We have to verify the information we reported. So we'll send that through an email process to let you know if we still need something. Or it may be as simple as here's your award information, but definitely once we complete your file, you will get some type of offer of what you're eligible for at BC3. And lastly, I note we can help you through this process. So please, um, if you are stuck or having trouble or not receiving information from us and you're through that two to three weeks, please reach out to us so that we can help you. We are actually um, doing virtual FAFSA meetings. So if you go to our website, you can um, sign up and we can do one-on-one -on -one go to meetings to help you get through the FAFSA application. Or again, if you're trying to complete documentations that we need. So make sure again, that you stay in touch with us and you're watching for your email to receive something from our office once you complete the FAFSA. So in connecting with us, as I shared, we have our financial aid email. Currently, right now, since we're working remote, if you call, the phone number on there will ask you to send us an email. But if you prefer a phone call, we can do that. You just need to let us know, and then we can talk to you over the phone. Or like you said, schedule go-to meetings to assist you in your financial aid process. And that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. Thanks for explaining the various types of financial aid that are available for our BC3 students. 
Just a reminder, if you have any additional questions for Julie or our panelists, don't forget to type them into the question pane on the attendee control panel. Before I introduce our next presenter, we have one last question for our audience. Our third poll is, what subject area are you interested in studying? Business, education, general studies, public safety and security, or social services? Please select the appropriate response and click Submit. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, we will close the poll. We are now closing the poll. And let me share the results with everyone. So it looks like we've got a good uh, variety here. 42% of you are interested in general studies, 33% education, and 25% business. I would now like to take the opportunity to introduce our next presenter, Ms. Alice DeBonis our site representative for BC3 at Linden Point. Take it away, Alice. Hi, I'm Alice DeBonis, BC3 at Linden Point Secretary, and I am honored that I'm showcasing BC3 at Linden Point during this virtual open house. I want you to know that our Linden Point team takes pride in providing a friendly, open, comfortable, and supportive environment for our students and the community. So before I move forward, I want to quickly introduce our administrative and supportive staff. Leading us is John Caesar. John has respectfully served as Linden Point's director since 2010. However, John is retiring at the end of June and beginning July 1st, Lauren Buchanan will take over this important role. Lauren is not new to BC3. She has been the director of our Cranberry site for several years, and the Linden Point team is excited that she is joining us. Next is Mary Kay Burnett, our Student Services Technology Support Specialist. Mary Kay is here to advise and support our students with course registration, career and transfer exploration, and much more. Mary Kay has served BC3 for 10 years and has also taught college level courses for over 20 years. So she offers a wealth of advising and academic knowledge to our students and our community. And lastly, Caitlin DeMarco, our center assistant. Caitlin is a recent and wonderful addition to BC3. In September, she will celebrate her first year working with us and has proven to be an ideal fit and a wonderful team member. And not pictured, I'd like to um, point out that we also have um, members who are not part of our primary Linden Point team, and that is Sherry Osborne, who is our student success coach. Sherry is typically on our site two days a week during the fall and spring semesters and coordinates and assists students with tutoring and disability services. And off-campus site student support coordinator, Steve Lokovich, is at Linden Point one to two days a week during our fall and spring semesters. Steve assists students and family members with financial aid questions and advising. Okay, so in addition to our supportive services, and I imagine the chief reason why you're here, BC3 at Linden Point offers a wide selection of career and transfer associate degree programs. As Susie mentioned earlier, our career programs allow students to develop the professional and technical skills necessary to start a career after graduation. At Linden Point, we offer business management, emergency services, police services option, human resources management, marketing management, radiologic technology, and a medical billing and coding specialist certificate. We also have transfer, um, many transfer programs to choose from. 
As mentioned, these programs are designed for students who wish to transfer their BC3 credits to earn a bachelor's degree. And I believe over half of our attendees uh, selected that they're interested in our transfer programs. So um, BC3 at Linden Point offers business administration, criminology, computer science, communications, early childhood education, general studies, physical education, sports management option, pre-nursing, psychology, secondary education, and social work. And as Susie stated, BC3 has 12 transfer partnerships, also known as point-to-point -point agreement programs. Of those 12, we have at least seven of them that can be completed here in Hermitage. Now, while uh, earning your degree or college credits at Linden Point, we offer several student-run clubs that you can join. And we offer many student activities. With our clubs, we offer seven for now. It's a business club, diversity, book, gardening and beautification, journalism, film, SAD, which stands for Students Against Destructive Decisions, and social psychology. Now, being a part of a college-based club can help you meet new friends, establish important communication and networking skills, which is very important for professional success, and clubs allow you to take an active role in supporting our community. Studies show student involvement increases student success. Now, we also offer many student activities such as community outreach, fun events, as well as educational presentations and activities. Examples of our community service events include hosting blood drives, food and clothing drives, and hosting a wide range of fundraisers. And examples of our fun events include a campus-wide Oktoberfest, um, we launch movie marathons, we have games and contests, seasonal, seasonal celebrations, and much more. And examples of our educational presentations and activities that we launch, which typically occur during our common time. That's a midday time slot where our students have a class break. Often during this common time, we invite guest speakers. And uh, last semester, we offered TED Talk Tuesdays where students enjoyed our nar nacho bar while watching a TED Talk video. And we offered weekly meditation sessions, which was widely popular with our students and staff. Also helpful to our students are our career-based um, workshops, such as resume preparation, interviewing skills, and professional development. So I am confident you will discover that BC3 at Linden Point is a wonderful place to begin your educational journey while pursuing your career goals. Here we have open computer labs, private tutoring and studying rooms, a group tutoring area, science lab, quiet lounge areas, a mini kitchen area with a sink, refrigerator, and snack and beverage machines. And you can also enjoy our outside patio weather permitting, and directly behind our building is a wonderful community walking path. So connect with us at the contact information listen, listen, uh, listed on this slide. And please know that our team welcomes you to take a tour of our building when we reopen. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alice. It's so nice to see that there's so much opportunity for students to get involved in all the activities that our students have at the Linden Point location. Thank you. At this time, we're gonna hand it back over to Ms. Suzanne Wazalewski to review the next steps in the enrollment process. Thank you, Amy. Um, I do definitely want to go over your next steps with you. Whether you've applied to BC3 already or have not yet applied, these next steps are really crucial to each and every one of you in getting started here at BC3. What I want to tell you is BC3 does adhere to an open admissions policy. And what this means is that as long as you have your high school diploma or equivalency, you will be accepted to get started in your educational journey at BC3. If you have taken your SAT or ACT, though these tests are not required, we can certainly take a look at your scores to see if that would exempt you from some basic placement testing and place you into college level English and math courses. 
Though we have that open admissions policy, I will let you know that if you are considering the healthcare path, we do have four selective healthcare programs here at BC3. The first is nursing, which we've mentioned several times throughout our time together this afternoon. Another is our physical therapist assistant program. We also have a medical assistant program that is selective in nature, as well as a massage therapy program that is selective. And by selective, what we typically mean is that these programs have certain minimum GPA and often science requirements that students must meet to apply and be accepted into these programs. So if any of those four that we've listed are of interest to you, feel free to follow up with us and we can get you more detailed information on that. Right now, uh, through May 17th, the BC3 application is free. So it's a really good time to apply and save the $25 application fee, maybe put that towards textbooks down the road. So again, that application is free through May 17th. If you're looking to apply, whether it's for this fall, next spring, or even still this summer, this is a great time to get your application submitted through the BC3 website. After applying, you'll want to have your official high school, G high school transcript or GED high set scores sent into the admissions office. Uh, one of the questions we've had recently is, what if I'm still enrolled in high school and I don't have my final high school transcript sent in? You can still send in your current high school transcript and at the conclusion and graduation, you can then have your final official high school transcript sent in. High school transcripts aren't just important for placement, but they're also important for things like scholarships. So you want to make sure you definitely send those into BC3 after making application. And if you're transferring credits to BC3 from elsewhere, you will also want to have any official college and university transcripts sent to our Office of Records and Registration. That way they can evaluate those transcripts and see if any credits you previously took could transfer in towards your program of study at BC3. As Julie mentioned during the financial aid portion of our presentation today, if you've not done so already, a good thing to do next would be to apply for the FAFSA to complete your FAFSA, that free application federal student aid. Um, and there's a few week turnaround there, but that way you can have that in the pipeline as well as your application to BC3. If you need placement testing, let's say you have not taken an SAT, ACT, or anything like that in the past and you need placement testing, we will instruct you via your BC3 email address on how to go about completing that. And once you placement test, you'll meet with your academic advisor who will help you schedule all of your courses. They'll help you look at the days, the times, and make sure that you're taking the appropriate courses for your program of study at BC3. Our fall courses begin on August 24th. We do also have a later start session on September 21st. And in addition to those two start dates, we do have three fully online fast track sessions that run throughout the fall semester. Those are five week condensed courses. What's nice about those options is though they're condensed, they allow a student to focus on one course at a time. And when one course ends, the following Monday, the next one begins. So a student could really focus on one condensed course at a time and make their way through three, four, five courses per semester depending on what course load they're comfortable carrying. So there are multiple enrollment opportunities throughout the fall semester if August 24th is a little sooner than you were hoping to enroll. Thank you again, thank you Susie. Much. Thanks, Susie. Uh, we're now going to begin the answering uh, of some of the questions that have been submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the question pane in your attendee control panel. Okay, it looks like our first question is from Ava. Ava will be a senior in high school next year, and unfortunately, due to the circumstances, her AS, uh, ACT and SAT were canceled, but she is rescheduled for June. She's asking, can she apply today and then have her scores sent later without having to take the placement exams? 
I could certainly answer that for you, Ava. Um, yes, you can still apply today and then later on have your scores sent. I believe when you sit for the ACT or SAT, they allow you to have them sent to a particular number of schools, so you can list BC3 on there to have them sent directly, or at any BC3 location, if you were to log into your College Board account to print that score report in front of a BC3 staff member, we could utilize those scores as well for you. Um, so I'm not sure quite when you're planning to begin classes, maybe you were looking to start through our College Now program um, next year during your senior year, but either way, you could certainly apply now, and then as soon as you have those scores available, get them to us so we can get you into the appropriate courses. Great, thanks for that answer, Susie. This next question is from Bill, and Bill asks, he plans to attend only part-time because he'll be working full-time. Will he still be able to qualify for financial aid? Yes, Bill, you will. Um, pretty much all our programs, you have to be at least six credits. So the grant program, student loan, um, again, six credits, which is two classes, would still qualify you to apply for the financial aid process. Great. Thanks for that answer, Julie. Our next question is from Jacob. Jacob is planning to transfer to a different university after completing one semester at BC3. Where would he find the course descriptions for the general education courses? And I can answer that one for you, Jacob. Uh, on the BC3 website, we do have our college catalog. So if you go to bc3.edu, under the directory tab, you will see the college catalog as an option. Um, course descriptions, I believe, is one of the options, second from the bottom, under that academic catalog. And there you can filter by course heading, subject, or the exact course number, if you know it, to get that course description that you may need. Susie, thanks so much. Our next question comes from Josh. Josh is asking, can I take any of the classes for the nursing or the PTA program at the Linden Point site? Is that mine? <laughs> sure, yeah, Alice. We, we, we do have pre-nursing, so yes, we do offer many of the general classes, and then I'll let Susie, you know, take it from there. Sure, absolutely, Alice. Thank you. Um, yes, you can take many of the pre-nursing and pre-PTA courses at Linden Point. Things like um, college writing, intermediate algebra, general psych, physical wellness, as well as anatomy and physiology one and two. All of those courses are required for both of those healthcare programs, and all of those can be done entirely at BC3 at Linden Point. Once you apply and are accepted into one of those specialty programs, though, do note that your clinical um, pharmacology, those types of courses, are at the main campus in all right we have a question from Tanner uh, Tanner is asking how much uh, does it cost per credit to attend BC3 um, at Linden Point sure Tanner so um, tuition is per county of residency so it depends on where you reside so for um, a non-butler county resident it would be 270 dollars per credit hour most of our courses are three credit courses with the exceptions of courses like lab sciences those are typically four credits because they have the lab built in um, so it would be 270 dollars per credit hour and most of those courses are three credits great thanks so much uh Susie for that answer. All right, we have a question from Matt. Uh, Matt has taken courses at IUP and is looking to continue his education with the Pittsburgh Institute of Mortuary Science. To finish that program, he needs to gain uh, eight more credits. Should I transfer credits from IUP to BC3 or vice versa simply to progress with PIMS? So it depends on what PIMS wants you to do. Um, with some students, I've had students in this type of, um, not exactly with those particular schools, but looking to take some prerequisites for another program, is some students apply as a guest student. And what they'll do is they'll take college credits here to then transfer with them to their destination school. Um, being a guest student is a um, pretty streamlined process. You would apply and select general studies guest as your program of study on your application. 
Guest students are not eligible for financial aid. They're typically concurrently enrolled at two institutions. Um, or if you plan to spend a semester or a year just with us at BC3 um, and then transfer on, you may want to select just general studies degree to then transfer those credits to PIMS. Great, thank you, Susie, for answering that question for Matt. Our next question is from Maya. She's asking, um, how does she go about uh, to receive extra time or is there an opportunity to receive, uh, receive extra time uh, for a test without having an IEP on file? So we do have um, an application for disability services through BC3. I think both Alice and I had mentioned during our portions of the presentation our access and disability support staff at each location. So we could get you that application or it is available on the BC3 website. You would fill out that documentation and work with one of the access and disability support staff who could then work with you to make those necessary accommodations. So if it is extra time on testing, they could sit with you and determine how much. They would provide you with what's called a memo and then it would be your responsibility to um, provide that information to your instructors if you choose to use those accommodations once you're enrolled in your classes. Yes, and if you connect at the um, email that was posted on the LP slide, just connect with me and um, reach out to me and I'll be happy to even send you that information, okay? Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that answer. Uh, our next question is probably for Julie. This is from Tracy and she asks, I have a couple of additional questions about my FAFSA. Who should I contact and how is the best way since the campuses are remote? Okay, Tracy, so you can start with email and do that financial aid at bc3.edu. And then if you prefer to do a phone call um, note my name. So you can say I, I attended the virtual open house, Julie Ludit spoke, and I would like to talk to her personally and leave your number and then I'll call you and we can go over that over the phone if that works. Great. Thanks so much, Julie. Okay. Uh, we have a question now from Elizabeth and she's asking uh, where would she find the class list and times for the Butler main campus, those courses that are offered on the main campus, uh, documents similar to the ones attached in the handout section. Sure, so you can find um, the course schedules for all of our locations on the BC3 website if the easiest way to locate that in the search bar is to type credit schedule. Right now you'll see both summer and fall courses listed there. You can filter by location, by day, um, by type of course, so that would be the best place to look since it encompasses everything you may need. But if you want to filter by Butler, uh, that way you could just view which courses are available at the main campus. All right, and our last question uh, for today, and if it's okay with the panelists, I will take the uh, field this question. Uh, Rebecca is asking, uh, will the BC3 fall classes be held on all campuses or will they be remote? Well, Rebecca, thanks for the question. The college is carefully considering various delivery options for instruction for fall to 2020. Uh, the safety of our college community is, of course, the top priority. We continue to assess new information and as the situation unfolds, we'll make the final decision in the coming months. And be sure to communicate that information to our current and continuing students as well as our new uh, and transferring students uh, in the near future. Oh, we did get one last question <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and take it since we have a couple minutes, if you guys are okay. Uh, Angela says she's interested in getting into environmental science. She was wondering and curious if there's any of those types of classes offered at BC3 at Linden Point. Well, I do know, well, 
I'll let you take that, Susie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sure. I have not looked at the fall schedule for Linden Point yet, um, but I do know in terms of courses that we offer at BC3, things like mm -hmm. environmental biology, botany, those types of mm -hmm. courses, I believe in the past, um, have been offered at Linden Point. Um, so we would just look to see what days and times those are available um, and, and try and find the right fit for you. Even if there's some of the courses are not offered at Linden Point, we could also look to other locations. Let's say, for instance, um, you know, three out of four of the courses you need that semester at Linden Point, we can look to minimize, you know, driving or see if one of the courses that you need is online, something along those lines to make sure that you can take the majority of your courses at BC3 at Linden Point close to you. Yes, and uh, with um, the extra material that you're receiving, you will uh, note our um, classes there that are for our STEM and our science classes as well. Great. Semester. And we'll always have the opportunity to follow up with you, Angela, too, with some uh, with some additional information for that. All right. Well, thank you all to the presenters today, and thank you to everyone who has attended our virtual open house at BC3 at Linden Point. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to view the recording of today's webinar and also a link to apply online. And remember, you can apply to BC3 today for free and through May 17th. On behalf of Butler County Community College and our panelists, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.